In this video, the viewer will learn how to configure the Trio Q Data Radio to operate in E-Series compatibility mode within a Trio E-Series radio network. The more common Trio E-Series hardware variants have been replaced with equivalent Trio Q Data Radios. Products shown here are interoperable, but application requirements do need to be validated before attempting substitution. The serial-only ER450 and Ethernet serial ER45E, simplex or half-duplex remote type radios, may be replaced with the QR450. Note that two frequency ranges are available for the Q data radio, either 400 to 450 MHz or 450 to 518 MHz. Also, two regulatory types are available, the FCC version and the ETSI and ACMA versions. The EB450 and EB45E full duplex base or repeater models are both replaced by the rack mountable QB450. The EH450 and EH45E hot standby full duplex models are both replaced by the QH450. A full duplex version of the ER450 and ER45E was available. This would allow the radio to transmit using the front panel N connector and receive using the rear panel SMA connector at the same time. A QB450 is however required to replace this model. Also, the E-Series included many frequency variants which together covered the range between 370 and 518 MHz. With the Q-Series UHF product line, two frequency variants now cover the range of 400 to 518 MHz. So this leaves the 370 to 400 MHz range not supported at this time. The Q-Data Radio was designed as a replacement for the Trio E-Series. While operating in E-Series emulation mode, the Trio Q and the Trio E have the following similarities. User configurable features and options, general functionality and operation, local and remote diagnostics and network management capability, and RF and bit error rate performance. However, there are some differences that do need to be discussed. Standby power consumption, form factor, communication cables and antenna connectors, and also the configuration interfaces used. First, power consumption. It can be seen here that the QR450 requires about 5 watts of input power on receive, while the ER45E requires 2.5 watts. The QR450 also requires a larger power supply on transmit. The greater power consumption is primarily due to the much more powerful microprocessor. The QR450 dimensions are significantly different than those of the ER45E and ER450. An adapter plate is available. The QB450 requires only one rack unit compared to the EB450's two rack units, and the QH450 requires only three rack units rather than the five rack units of the EH450. Here it can be seen that the ER450 has two separate DE9 serial ports, an RJ45 system port for programming and diagnostics, a two-pin power connector, and an N-type antenna connector. The ER45E is similar, but has only one DE9 serial port while adding an RJ45 Ethernet port. The QR450 has several differences. The RF port is a TNC type, and two serial ports are available on a single DE9 connector. There are two RJ45 LAN ports, and the power connector, while similar to that on the E-Series, includes two integral locking screws. Schneider offers a kit to aid in quickly changing an E-Series remote radio to a Q-remote. It includes a mounting plate that matches the form factor of an ER, and an RF adapter to allow use of the existing coaxial cable with its end connector. It also includes a serial adapter cable to allow easier access to the second serial port, and a serial cable for that port. The part number for this kit is shown here. The Trio E and M series radios are configured with the TView Management Suite software, which can be downloaded from the Schneider website at no cost. The Q Data Radio, however, is configured with standard Windows applications such as a web browser, Telnet, or Secure Shell for network access, or with the use of a serial terminal such as HyperTerminal. Note that when a Q radio is in E emulation mode, one of the serial ports may be configured as a system port 
and used to remotely configure E or M radios via TVU or to perform diagnostics. Various resources exist to learn about the Q data radios. These should be consulted before beginning. The TVU Management Suite software can be downloaded at no cost by following the link shown. As part of the software installation, quick start guides and user manuals will be available in the TRIO Datacom Programs folder. Also, the Schneider YouTube channel includes numerous TRIO videos, including the one shown here. Configuration items shown on the following slides will not discuss all configuration parameters, but rather focus on those which are key to a successful transition. For items which are the same as those in the E-Series radios, please refer to the existing E-Series documents for details. Note that it is important to have the configuration files for the existing radios available before starting this process. Parameters of the new Q data radios must be set to match those in existing radios. Here is the home page of a QR450 radio. As this is a new Q data radio, the default IP address was entered. To navigate to the configuration pages, the setup menu is chosen. A TRIO QR450 has two Ethernet ports versus one on an ER45E. There are, however, three on the front panel of each of the rack-mountable Q radios. Any unused ports may be disabled if not required. As with the E-Series Ethernet radios, the IP address should be changed from the default. An IP address is required even if the radio will be replacing a serial-only E-Series. If replacing an Ethernet E-Series radio, enter the same IP address here. An appropriate subnet mask must also be entered. The most critical configuration change is to set compatibility to the E and M data radio mode on the radio setup page. Once this is done, other parameters may change, appear, or disappear. The modulation type must be set to match that used in existing radios in the system. This information can be found by opening the configuration file of an existing E-Series or M-Series radio in the TVU Programmer software. The transmit and receive frequencies must be set to match those used in the radio being replaced. Transmit power and mute level must also be set to match. If replacing an Ethernet E-Series radio, the radio type must be set the same as in the radio being replaced. Only one access point radio is allowed. If replacing a serial-only E-Series radio, it will not have this parameter. In this case, if the radio being replaced is the central radio in the system, set the type to access point. This would either be the master radio in a system with no repeater, or a central repeater. Otherwise, set the radio type to remote. The peer-to-peer -peer repeat feature must remain disabled unless the radio being replaced is a repeater. Remember that in an Ethernet E-Series system, only one repeater is allowed. The stream IDs are used to route traffic from different ports appropriately. The Ethernet SID typically remains at the default value of 250, but if it is different in the radio being replaced, enter that value here. The stream repeat and stream translate entry boxes are only used in E-Series repeaters. Leave these blank if configuring a remote. If configuring a repeater, however, enter the same range as in the original E-Series repeater configuration. The parameters shown here for collision avoidance should be set the same as in the radio being replaced. Note that the values shown are examples only. Digital collision avoidance is somewhat more common in systems with a full duplex repeater, while carrier detect is typical in systems without a full duplex repeater. The serial data ports should be configured the same as in the radio being replaced. If replacing a serial only radio, you may need to configure both ports, while Ethernet E-Series have only one serial port. The most common selection will likely be serial data port. Configuration of the character layer settings, receive and transmit stream IDs, and packet layer choice are all required. One port may be set as a system port, the same as used on an E or M series radio, allowing over-the-air configuration of existing E or M radios or serial diagnostic polling. Alternately, ports may be configured to convert Ethernet over-the-air traffic to serial local traffic using either the Modbus gateway or serial device server capabilities. 
Again, these parameters must be set the same as in the radio being replaced. Virtual ports exist only in the Ethernet E-series radios, not the serial-only radios. These optional virtual ports allow conversion of Ethernet data streams to serial traffic in the entry point radio rather than the remote radio. This is useful because E-series Ethernet radios send data over the air as serial traffic. Ethernet messages must be encapsulated within a serial frame. Converting to serial at the entry point is more efficient than sending as encapsulated Ethernet and then converting to serial in the remote radio. Please note that specifics of virtual port configuration are beyond the scope of this video. Refer to the Ethernet E-Series user manual if more information is needed. Pole diagnostics should be configured the same as in the radio being replaced. Stream ID 0 is the most commonly used for diagnostics. It is important to ensure diagnostics repeat is enabled in only one radio in the system. This is typically the radio configured as the access point, whether it is at the master or at a central repeater location. Automatic diagnostics is typically only enabled if the TVU diagnostic software or clear SCADA is running constantly to receive these automatically generated messages. Leave it disabled otherwise to avoid unnecessary traffic on the system. eDiags is only available in the Ethernet E-Series radios. The controller IP address is that of the computer running TVU or clear SCADA for radio diagnostic purposes. This feature should be enabled in only one radio to which the diagnostic computer is directly connected by LAN cable. That radio will convert Ethernet diagnostic messages to serial and send them over the air to all other radios in the system. Encryption must be set the same as in existing radios. If enabled, the encryption key must be manually entered. It cannot be saved in the radio configuration file, which is not itself secure. Now, to review key parameters required when configuring a TRIO Q data radio to operate in an E-series system. Here is an example of a point-to-multipoint system. This is a simplex system as only one frequency is available for both transmit and receive. Modulation compatibility in the Q data radio must be set to E and M data radio mode. Modulation type must be set the same as in the other radios in the system. Here, 9600 bits per second, 12.5 kHz bandwidth is shown as an example only. As this radio is remote, the radio type must be set to remote. If we were replacing the entry point radio, it would be configured as access point. In this system, the transmit and receive frequencies must be both the same in all radios. The collision avoidance mode must match in all radios. As this system does not include a full duplex central radio, digital collision avoidance is not possible. The Ethernet stream ID is at the default value of 250, matching the entry point radio. The serial receive stream ID is 3, as the entry point radio's transmit stream ID is 3. And as the transmit stream ID is 2, the entry point's receive stream ID also is 2. Lastly, the serial port is set to serial data port mode at 19,200, 8, none, and 1 with Modbus packet layer, as that is what was set in the entry point. Note that other parameters may need to be set as well in your system. For example, encryption may need to be enabled. Here is a second example, in this case including a central full duplex repeater. This requires two separate frequencies. Again, modulation compatibility in the Q data radio must be set to E and M data radio mode. The type must be set as in the other radios in the system, 9600, 12.5 kHz in this example. As this radio is remote, again the radio type must be set to remote. This is a duplex system, so the transmit and receive frequencies are different. The repeater transmits on 456 and receives on 451 MHz, so all other radios must be the opposite. This remote is set to transmit on 451 and receive on 456 MHz. The collision avoidance mode must match in all radios. The system includes a full duplex central radio, so digital collision avoidance may be used. The Ethernet stream ID is set to 250, matching the other radios. The serial receive stream ID is 3, as the entry points transmit stream ID is 3. And as the remote's transmit stream ID is 2, 
the entry point's receive stream ID is 2. Lastly, the serial port is set to serial port mode again at 19,200, 8, none, and 1 with Modbus packet layer, as that is what was set in the entry point. Note again that other parameters may need to be set in the new radio for it to be fully functional with the existing E-Series radio system. Having the configuration files for the radios in the system is critical to avoid confusion and mistakes. Thank you for watching this video on the E-Series compatibility mode of the TRIO-Q data radio.